Hey, what's up, guys? This week, the Chicago Sun Times uh, is uh, taking a look at architecture in one of the city's most hyped. It's one of the city's most hyped features. But photographer and writer Lee B says not enough love is given to the churches, chapels, and other buildings south of the downtown area. When the South Side was sort of in its birth years and, and afterwards, there's a lot of resources coming in there. You know, big companies, steel mills, meat packers, all kinds of things. And with that, a measure of, of wealth came. And you, and you have to build houses for, uh, for workers and for bosses and for all those things. And, uh, and as a result, there's a variety of architecture in the South Side. And all those things together, sort of a concentration of wealth, uh, the, the size of the South Side, needing to build all that land, um, created the places that you see. Now, and of course, with churches, you know, people are coming from the old country and people are coming from down south. You know, they're putting money in the plate and they're, and they're making special places for themselves to worship. Which ones in the article did you look at in particular, the churches? There's First Church of Deliverance, which, struck, which stands out, which is a church in Bronzeville at 43rd and Wabash. And this was a, was a former hat factory, and it was converted into a church by the state's first licensed black architect, Walter Thomas Bailey, and the first licensed uh, structural engineer who was black, uh, Charles Sumner Duke. And they reclad this building and later on added towers. And they gave it a streamlined art modern look. It was completely di different than yeah, it. it's quite a shift. It, it is, it is. <laughs> and, and, and so it's a very modern style, very modern style, unusual for a church, but also keeping in mind that first church of deliverance at the time was a very modern and progressive church. So the architecture matched the, the kind of the theme of the church. So that's what one that stood out. When people pick up the article in the Sun Times, read the excerpt from your book, what do you hope they take away from it? Not this sort of wasteland of crime and disinvestment, that it really is a beautiful place, beautiful architecture, people who are supporting and uplifting and creating this, this architecture. And where the South Side is troubled, much like the West Side as well, that it didn't come because of the moral failings of the people who live there. That, that there's been a systematic response to kind of a black and brown presence in Chicago, which is racism, and that, that creates through banking and other institutions, kind of creates the trouble spots that we see. And if Chicago is gonna be the world-class city that we all say it is, it has to make right uh, by those parts of the city, the South Side and the West Side as well. And to learn more about this story and others, head on over to the Chicago Sun-Times website. We're also going to have a link up on the JMTVShow.com about that. And, you know, the interesting thing about this is how uh, really he's highlighting inequality in the city through talking about the architecture. When we talk about architecture, we just think downtown structures, but we have some cool stuff on the south side of town, too. And in the south side, too, I mean, there's so much musical history in yeah. those churches. The First Church of Deliverance was actually a radio station. They mm -hmm. pressed gospel albums there. Some major headlines. think about Bronzeville and, yeah. and the jazz that happened there. Like, there's amazing stuff that went down. Yeah. yeah. The more okay. we can do to save it, the better, for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. Thanks, Brandon.